call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I speak in support of the amendment moved by the member for Castle Hill. The pandemic has not been easy for anyone, and any region for that matter, but the community of Western Sydney has felt its impacts more than most. Western Sydney community is not only resilient, but rich with cultural and environmental diversity and economic opportunity. In Western Sydney, we have a fast-growing, diverse and dynamic economy, a strong industrial base that generates $56 billion annually in gross regional product and is one of the most diversified regional economies in Australia. Demographics that present opportunity, including a diverse and educated workforce with some of the fastest sustained population growth in the OECD. And we have great lifestyles from urban living to semi-rural with vibrant CBDs and world-class national parks and waterways. The vision of the Western Sydney Parkland City is to create 200,000 new jobs across a wide range of industries over the next 20 years. The airport and aerotropolis will attract infrastructure, investment and knowledge, intensive jobs, the benefits of which will flow into health and education, retail, hospitality and industrial activities that will power the city. Since this initial agreement, we've made incredible progress. The largest earthworks project in Australia has commenced in the building of the Western Sydney International Airport. Government commitments to investing in the connectivity of the airport and the Western Parkland City can be seen with $11 billion, I'm going to repeat that, $11 billion committed to the Sydney Metro, to the Western Sydney Airport. We have also um, committed more than $1 billion in funding to commence development of the Bradfield City Centre. Bradfield City Centre is approximately 114 hectares right in the heart of the Aerotropolis and adjacent to the airport. The Bradfield City Centre will become a global hub for an advanced industry cluster. This includes defence and aerospace industries, manufacturing and logistics, future transport industries, construction technology and new energy and Order. circular econo economy industries. The New South Wales Government has committed $48 million for the high-tech first building of the Bradfield City Centre, which will include shared use equipment, allowing research, Order. institutions, industry and to collaborate. It will be part of a dynamic, smart, future-ready precinct that will support 17,600 highly skilled jobs. The first building will be a great company. There will be a rolling series of projects with further active uh, that will activate the city centre. For example, CSIRO has announced the intention to relocate up to 450 of its employees and researchers into a state-of-the-art facility in the heart of the new Western Sydney Aerotropolis from 2016. Um, Mr. Mr Speaker, I, I really don't know uh, what mushroom the member for Londonderry has been living under because actually I want to raise point six of the motion and it says calls on the government to ensure businesses can, un can successfully reopen people, can get their jobs back and that Western Sydney can recover and thrive after years of underinvestment and months of harsh restrictions. Hello? What is going on here? Now, I, I don't know what's happening here. In stark contrast, you, you, have, to, you have to look at it seems that you've forgotten the previous the Labor Londonderry Party record. Back in the Bob Carr built nothing days, there was nothing built. I attended three announcements of the Sydney Metro North West that never happened. I sat in a room with Maurice Yemmer, delivered nothing. The Bob Carr built nothing days, delivered nothing. And you need to remember that this government, this, you're living in the past, you've always been in the past. I thank the member for Hawkesbury. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Speaker, seek leave. Seek is leave granted? Yes, it is. Leave's granted. Member for yes, really.